My name is Christopher Sands, and I'm director of the Canada Institute at the Woodrow Wilson International Center for Scholars. Last week, the government of Canada decided that they were going to impose a vaccination requirement on truck drivers crossing into Canada from the United States. Although the border has been restricted as part of the COVID response since March of 2020, we considered truck drivers essential traffic and allowed them to cross back and forth without any proof of vaccination up until now. This sets us up for another supply chain hurdle at the same time we're already having trouble getting enough trucks to and from to keep our supply chains coming along between the US and Canada. One of the reasons that this is challenging is that the American Trucking Association estimates now that only about 60% of truck drivers uh, operating in the United States are fully vaccinated. They didn't need to be before. We're already having a supply chain crunch with not enough drivers on the roads and not enough trucks on the move. Canada is a part of essential U.S. supply chains from automotive to food processing to uh, healthcare, uh, sort of medical equipment, PPE. If we stop being able to easily cross the border, it's going to add to the cost, first of all, of driving back and forth across the border. It will create supply chain problems where we can't get deliveries of important goods. And in particular, I think the drivers who are fully vaccinated, who are able to go back and forth across the border, will increasingly want to be paid more because they have that special qualification. That's going to compound the inflation that we're already seeing in both Canada and the United States at record levels. So Canada and Canada and the United States have approached COVID slightly differently, where you've seen culturally the Canadians have had a much lower risk tolerance, and that, that's true across a range of behaviors in Americans who are much more risk uh, open. What that's meant is that Canada's lockdowns have been more severe, and the politics surrounding COVID have been much more safety first. And that has led both Ontario and Quebec in recent weeks to reimpose very severe lockdowns in order to try to get control of the Omicron variant. Whereas in the United States, we haven't seen the full return to those lockdowns. So that the two countries are out of sync right now in the way that they're approaching things, but very much in sync with the voters in each country. Politicians are following what the voters want and they want strict in Canada and they want more opportunity to experiment and, and keep things open in the United States. And that disconnect is leading us to, uh, to increasingly different approaches so different sectors are going to be affected in different ways. After USMCA and before that NAFTA, we stopped making finished goods and selling to each other. Increasingly, we're co-workers. And so in sectors like the auto industry, highly integrated across the border, including areas where we're talking about critical minerals for electric vehicles and, and other important products, to personal protective equipment and vaccines, all moving back and forth in a fluid way across the border. That's what's going to be disrupted. It'll be difficult for Canadians to get the supplies at their local stores. It'll be difficult for the U.S. to complete products because key components will not arrive on time from Canada. Just the uncertainty can cause a drag on the competitiveness of our manufacturers. Food sector, for example, we have perishable goods that hit the border. They need to cross and get to where they're going before they spoil, before they rot. That's really hard to manage when you don't know whether you're going to be able to get your driver across the border. The problem is with a sudden imposition of a requirement rather than a phase in introduction of new restrictions. There's almost nothing that business can't adapt to if you give them time to adapt, but moving suddenly doesn't allow them to make the adjustments quickly and that guarantees supply chain problems. The answer to this probably is not an agreed position between the two countries, but a phase in that allows for some flexibility and enforcement, but with a date certain by which everyone must comply That'll allow for a little bit of additional planning and mitigate some of the, the negative impact of this sudden change.